SpaceX Starship IFT-9 FAA update. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning. And that is it. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking space, SpaceX, and of course a little bit of Linux here and there. Can't forget Starlink. So today we're going to be talking about SpaceX and Starship and IFT-9. I'm excited for this one, guys. I am excited. The date just keeps moving backwards. So we'll see what ends up happening with this. I have a new date for you today. There are some updates that just came through from the FAA, and I want to share them with you because I think that it's interesting, and I hope you do too. So before we get into all this, I just want to say if you enjoy, please throw the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and do all those things. And if you want to give back, there's a little thank you button. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. If you want more SpaceX Starlink content, I'll put a link here to a playlist about 480 plus videos, and I'm sure you'll absolutely love. So don't click on it yet. But I click on it when you're done watching this video. So let's jump right into this article. The FAA rejects SpaceX's booster catch for Starship Flight 9. The Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, approved SpaceX's Starship Integrated Flight Test 9, or IFT-9, set for no earlier than May 26th now, May 26th, at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time from SpaceX's star base, Boca Chica, Texas. However, the FAA rejected SpaceX's plan to catch the super heavy booster with its launch tower's chopstick arms, opting for a splashdown in the Gulf of America. This decision highlights the challenges SpaceX faces in advancing its reusable rocket technology. Flight 8's fallout, a regulatory roadblock. The FAA's ruling stems from the Starship Flight 8's failure on March 6, 2025. The upper stage launched but disintegrated over the Caribbean Sea nine minutes later due to multiple Raptor engine failures. Debris fallout grounded 240 commercial flights and closed airspace over the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos for hours. SpaceX submitted their mishap report on May 14th, but as of today, the FAA's review is ongoing. They won't approve a risky booster catch until the investigation concludes. Is it really risky? I don't know. I mean, it could be, and I'll get into that in just a second. On May 15th, the United Kingdom sent a letter to U.S. diplomats citing debris risk to Caribbean territories, adding international pressure. They basically don't want chunks of Starship falling in their backyard. Back ocean. You know what I mean. Pushing the limits, Flight 9's technical challenges. Flight 9 tests a new re-entry profile with a higher angle of attack, or AOA, cross-range trajectory, assessing SpaceX's ability to handle a steeper atmospheric descent. This is vital for missions like the lunar landing for NASA's Artemis program or the possibility of a crewed Mars trip by 2030. The untested maneuver and the booster catch's complexity prompted the FAA's cautious approach. Flight 9 also marks the first reuse of a Super Heavy Booster 14, which flew on January 16th with 29 of its 33 Raptor engines flight proven. 29 out of 33. That's nice. I like to see it. A splashdown in the Gulf of America protects the launch site and tower while expanded safety zones 1,600 nautical miles from Texas through the Straits of Florida mitigate debris risks. SpaceX's vision, a step towards interplanetary travel. The splashdown prioritizes data collection, aligning with SpaceX's goal to make Starship the first fully reusable rocket for interplanetary travel, potentially cutting mission costs from $1 billion to $10 million per launch. What a savings, amazing. 
A successful re-entry test sets the stage for a booster catch on Flight 10, pending FAA approval. The launch on May 26, 2025 at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time will be a key milestone in SpaceX's journey to revolutionary space flight and expand humanity's reach to other planets. Absolutely the case. Reusability is everything when it comes to this stuff, and that's why SpaceX is leading when it comes to all space companies, launch companies out there. The reason? Falcon 9 reusability. Some of those Falcon 9s have launched SpaceX Starlink satellites on orbit 20 plus times reused, refurbished, reused, refurbished over and over and over. And like they're stating here, they're going to do the same thing with Super Heavy on this launch. And that's one of the things that they've never done before. And that's why they're doing this added, let's say, security in the area, 1,600 nautical miles. So they're really pushing out that safety zone. There's a lot of safety going into this one. Also, not landing on the chopsticks on the Mechazilla arms is another safety feature because they don't know how this is going to react. Once again, this is a reused Super Heavy with 29 out of the 33 engines being used again. So the possibility of one of those engines going out is probably pretty high, but maybe not after refurbishment. And that's what's going to tell the whole story here. Are they going to have to continuously refurbish or are they not? Are they gonna be able to launch over and over and over? And by seeing only four of them new, meaning that 29 of those Raptor engines were still fine, that is a really, really positive thing there. So when I was looking up some additional information here, because you know, the articles sometimes are a little bit light in details, and I like to kind of put a little bit of extra meat on the bones. I was looking up this whole angle of attack thing, and I didn't realize this, but normally the way it comes back in to the atmosphere is at about a 40 to 50 degree, let's say slope, 40 to 50 degrees. That's the normal or standard attack, let's call it, angle of attack. Well, the new one, or the one that they're going to test, this new profile, is 60 to 70 degrees. That is a little bit, that's like 10, 20 degrees more angle on that. So what exactly does that do? I'm glad you asked. Basically, what it does is it allows for more lateral movement, okay? This is basically all that it is. Now, in comparison to having about a 500 kilometer, let's say drop zone or site, it now has a 1500 kilometer variation where it can actually touch down. That is a really big thing. Three times, let's say greater area where it can drop. That is really good because that's going to allow it to drop where it needs to in case of an emergency or in case there has to be some type of mission change to happen. Three times the latitude. That is a big, big deal. The other thing that was interesting to me is as it's coming through the atmosphere, normally at about 30,000 kilometers, it reaches around 4,500 miles per hour. That's how fast it's coming in at, 4,500 miles per hour. With this new profile, it's going to break by a thousand miles per hour. That is a lot. So let's drop that down to about 3,400. So maybe 1,100 miles per hour. It is a big difference. Let's call it a thousand just to round it off. A thousand miles per hour slower as it gets to that 30 kilometer window, that 30 kilometer altitude. So what that means is it's going to be slowing down a lot faster so that by the time it hits that 30,000 kilometers, it will be that thousand, let's say 1,100 miles per hour slower. So that is going to really take a toll on everything. Once again, how will these flaps hold up with that extra heat or that extra speed or that extra braking that is going to be going on? That is going to be interesting to see. And that's why they're really, they, that's what SpaceX does. They push the limits. They wanna know what they can do with this specific body, this block two, let's say body, and now move that information into block three that's already in the works. So this is really, really important. And that's what they do. I always say it all the time. SpaceX likes blowing up. That's what they do. 
And the reason being is so they can iterate faster, so they can also innovate faster. Without quicker iteration, you just can't figure out what is wrong. You can't figure it out by just doing a test fire on the ground. You need it to be falling at nearly 5,000 miles per hour, 4,500 miles per hour and breaking. <laughs> this is really what shows what it's made of, literally. When we saw the flaps and previous iterations start melting off, the skin just melting off it due to the plasma pouring off the thing, well, what did they do? they move the flaps in. So instead of sitting here at 180 degrees, they move them into like 130, 140 degrees. So they're tucked in, kind of like a bird coming in and it tucks its wings back so it can be a little bit more aerodynamic. It still has the same amount of mobility, but it's just simply not going to get as much plasma just pouring over it so that it melts. And that's what their idea is. Does it work? We don't know yet because the last one blew up. They weren't able to test it. Hopefully this time they are able to test it. So this is really great. I love to see that they're moving forward. I love to see the FAA granting approval. I wish that they've already conducted all of their research and tests and given them the full go ahead. And then we'll know the exact date and time this is going to launch. But the new date is now May 26th. Some people are saying 27th, but the new date is the 26th as of today. So stay tuned. I am going to cover this live. All right. And I did it for every other IFT. I absolutely love it. And a lot of times we'll have five, six, seven, eight hundred of you guys on with me hanging out as we do cover this. So this is a really big deal. And this mission is going to be the biggest deal out of all of them. And the reason being is they're really doing a lot of changes here from the heat tiles, from passive to some actively cooled tiles to the amount of propellant that is being held, about 25% more propellant to those tuck back um, flaps, which is really super, super cool. There's just a ton. And of course, even the biggest thing here is they're reusing Super Heavy. Once again, with 29 of the same Raptor engines, only four new ones. Anyways, what say you? What do you think? Down below, I want to hear from you. If you enjoyed the content, like I said before, throw it a thumbs up. That will be very helpful. And head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all of my merch, my tees, my shirts, my books, and everything else over there. Check it out. If there's something there you like, please pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you for IFT9. Take care, guys.